Good afternoon everyone, this is Dr. Diggs and Happy New Year to all of you guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Shiva Brutal Mission because let me tell you, you know that I love to do the different compositions for the Brutal Clears and today we're going to talk about all the different builds uh, that I've come up with and that a couple other people have come up with as well. Probably the build that I'm the most proud of and that we're going to spend the most time talking about right now is what I would call the Shiva 5 build, uh, or it's probably going to be known as the Sir O build. <laughs> now, the reason, the reason I wanted to do this build is because I wanted to show off kind of what's possible in this fight and how other units can be utilized either to trick the AI or to help support you. This composition can actually get you every single objective. There is not a single limited unit, limited Esper, limited VC in the comp composition. So this is something that a lot of people should be close to or near having access to. I think Probably you could get away with doing different variations of this composition, and I think a lot of people probably have. So let's jump in and talk about how it works. And I think the best way to do that is just to go in and show you guys. And if I wasn't clear enough, this is an auto composition, and this will actually eventually get you all the missions. It's actually dependent on a couple situations with Ildira and Adelard. Uh, specifically, it relies on Adelard getting stunned and Eldira not getting stunned in order to get the kill for enemies objective. But if you run it enough times, you should be able to like finish it and clear it. Now, usually you're going to see a lot of people running Ruin Stern in slot four. And I remember a time when I didn't have Ruin Stern. And so I really wanted to make a composition that didn't rely on Ruinstern in that position. And what you just saw with Sir O running up and using the illusion on uh, Fina is the key part of this strategy, right? I think we all know how the Ildira, Adelard, and Miranda side is going to operate, right? It's going to be a combination of jamming thrusts, and it's going to be a combination of uh, fire. But when Sir O runs up, and uses illusion right on Fina. What happens is it triggers one of the Spellblade AIs to run back to the other two skeletons, and it only makes one Spellblade AI run forward, meaning that essentially you're only going to have to deal with one Spellblade at a time on that side. And by the time the other three enemies get to you, your reinforcements of Ildira, Adelard, and Miranda are already going to be on the way. Now you can see here, Adelard is making pretty short work, and Ildira is actually pretty support heavy. Uh, it's actually Miranda and Adelard that are going to be doing most of the heavy lifting here, and you can see they just keep getting nailed with uh, Shiva's hits. And this is one of those iterations that we might have a difficulty jumping over and helping Sir O, but no matter what, they should all live, and you should be able to clear this relatively easily. Now, my Sir O is not even max geared, and my Fina isn't really maxed out either. I don't really have uh, all her abilities maxed. I don't have Essena maxed. And so, <laughs> there are times where Fina might get disabled, and she's going to just run around like a chicken with her head cut off, and you'll still win. Uh, the reason I chose Sir O was initially not because of the illusion where he runs to the side. My plan was to have Sir O actually evade some of the attacks since I know evade meta can actually work on this map. Uh, but I actually chose Sir O because he has innate disable resistance. And that is something that I really wanted on that right side because I tried to run Seymour over there. And what happened when I ran Seymour is that Seymour died. Uh, because Seymour got disabled and then Fina got disabled. And Seymour does not run to Fina to use Illusion. Uh, what actually happens is basically Seymour runs in, aggros all of them, and everybody dies. Here you can see that our Fina does get disabled and she's going to do a little bit of running around. That's fine. That's all good. I uh, was really great about having Ildira. She's really the crutch of the strategy and is essentially the crutch of all my strategies is that she's really able to reach that far reaching heal 
uh, if Sir O does need healing or does need support. You can see here, we're pretty much in line for mopping the rest of this up. And it's just going through nice and clean, killing the monsters here. And I'll go ahead and go over my strategy just a little bit more in depth. I'll show you guys the builds, the layout. And then I'll show you guys some of the other builds that I've been using. And kind of, you know, what the faster builds, the more reliable builds are that I've been using. And most of them specifically rely on Ildira and Ruinstern and a combination of either support units or other units that can help them out. I do think Ruinstern is probably your best bet. And I do think he is best used in slot number four because it seems like slot number four, no matter what, uh, is going to use their TMR ability on this map. So that being able to put bells on Ruinstern, having him pop that ability is really important for creating a sort of brutal auto farming group. Now we will get to the brutal multi here in just a little bit, but I did want to show off the rest of my brutal Shiva compositions. As you can see here, we didn't get all the missions, but we did get every single one. And what a perfect time for a crash, guys. I don't know about you, but ever since the new update, like my blue stacks is just incapable of actually working appropriately for any duration at all. Um, I, like even last night in my news video, it was just like straight down. I might actually have to go back to uh, casting from my phone, which is not something I want to do, but I can if I have to. Uh, it just means you guys might not see VTuber digs in a while. <laughs> So instead of jumping into the fights, let's just go over the different compositions that I have for the Shiva Brutal here. So I showed off Shiva 5. Shiva 4 is a little bit of a variation of this. Uh, I actually think this might be the most effective farming strategy. Uh, I think having Rosa paired with Ruinstern is really important. Uh, there's something about Rosa's AI which I haven't been able to place my thumb on. She actually uses her TMR ability in slot 3, and not a lot of units use their TMR ability in slot 3. I don't know what's different about her AI that makes her do this, but it does. And she's a really good support character, right? So she's going to be spending most of her time healing Ruin Stern. And I actually think this is better than running two melee characters in uh, slots 3 and slots 4. You can see I've run some different iterations. If you do have rain, rain is really powerful in slot five. Uh, you, do, you know, we just kind of we're wailing it up as we go along here. Uh, if you do have Sid, uh, if you don't have access to like a support unit for slot three, uh, running Sid and Ruinstern is really viable as well. Running Dwayne and Ruinstern, uh, pretty much any slashing damage dealer is going to be great in that position. Uh, and finally, the uh, composition with Ayaka, I actually think this composition would be optimized with, uh, if you did have Rosa, if you replaced Sid with Rosa, I think that would make this like a auto brutal farming, like you can literally ignore it and it'll farm like 50 times on its own. That being said though, my Shiva 5 with three MR units, no limited time units has been able to farm this like you know, seven times in a row without anybody dying. So this actually, like, it takes a long time, but it's actually going to get the job done. Now let's talk about multi, because multi Shiva is kind of a beast. And honestly, I feel like multi Shiva is like rolling the dice, and I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to run the multi Shiva, because you have to rely on other players, you have to rely on other players' VCs, and a lot of the times people might not have the right VCs synced up, which might cause you to die. Best rule of thumb that I've really found is run two Ildiras and then run two damage dealers. Of course, you could run like quadruple Ruin Stern in an evasion build. That's always possible. Um, I've seen one Ildira, three Ruin Sterns. Like there's there's a lot of different combinations, but they pretty much all hinge on Ildira and Ruin Stern. You can get away with some Dwayne in the online multi. Honestly, though, I think you're probably going to be best off uh, creating your own solo brutal farming group and farming that way. I think that's going to be the fastest way to get you both the materials and the recipes. And it's going to remove the headache of having to coordinate with other players 
which might not be a problem for a lot of people that watch my videos who are maybe in, you know, top guilds where, you know, you can just ping your guild and you can get a group of four people going. But I know a lot of players are, you know, not in that network space or don't have a lot of friends that might play this game. So they're kind of like, well, shit, I'm going to have to solo this or I'm going to have to try my luck and join multis. And that's the last thing anybody really wants to do. Anyway, guys, I should, I'll just go ahead and show off here. Uh, I'll show off kind of what Ruin, Stern, and Rosa can do because I think, I think that's uh, probably what I'm most proud of in this composition. I think Rosa, Rosa working together with Ruin, Stern is just so beautiful and they make such a good team over there. Uh, I'm pretty proud about having the Sir O though. It's so nice to be able to have Sir O come back as well. Uh, any, any of these compositions as well, depending on how Ildira acts and whether or not Adelard gets stunned or not, will give you the potential to clear four enemies at once. So you will always have that option in this composition. And if you just run it enough times, the AI should automatically just clear all the win conditions for you at some point. Uh, of course, that depends on Ildira not getting stunned, which, of course, on all the all the runs that I've showed you right now, she's gotten stunned every single time. <laughs> what you're going to see here, though, is Ruin Stern just really decimates on the other side, and with the Rosa support, he can just use all of his HP draining techniques, and you're not going to have to worry about him getting hit. That, you know, if I run two DPS, I actually run into the problem of Ruinstern getting close to death. And then it's like, do I really want Ruinstern dying all the time when I'm farming this? Not really. Uh, because, you know, I just don't. It just makes things more difficult. So we want it reliable. We want it easy. You can see my Rosas just pop and pray over there. And it's just going to be a pretty smooth transition. One of the other things I think that might be important to note here is that I do have Ribbon on a lot of my characters. And a lot of these characters were chosen uh, because of Disable Resistance, right? So if you haven't watched my Dwayne counter video yet, my Dwayne counter video talks a lot about all the units that have base Disable Resistance. And if anything, I think this map is really trying to teach us that base disable resistance, right, for Dwayne, so that we know, like, okay, these units can counter Dwayne, right? Like, it's a very unintuitive, intuitive way to try and get us to figure out how to counter Dwayne, which I think is funny. Uh, but that's, you know, kind of Square Enix in a nutshell here. All right, we need to show you my composition. I need to show you uh, kind of what the builds are here. So give me just a second, get through the quest screen. And I will show you guys what I have been running here. Pop this out. And I'll go over the uh, kind of the, the non-single unit composition first from Shiva 5. Uh, so we do have Miranda right here. Uh, speed cast, initial AP, Paladin's Guard. Uh, we do have a Solo Thalmasa maxed out. Uh, Miranda is one of those units, if you didn't know. Uh, who does have stop resistance, so you actually don't need to put a ribbon on her. Um, we have Lohengrin plus five. Red Chocobo, my favorite VC. We have um, we have Salir's TMR on Ildira, and then we have a ribbon on Ildira. Uh, Ildira, of course, here uh, does have natural disable resistance, and then she does have the stop resistance from ribbon. We have level four to level three. Uh, I should actually probably remove that because I believe all the monsters are level 80. So I might actually want to change it to Providence of Fire here. Uh, just so that she takes a little bit less damage. And I think she would actually do some more damage. Uh, because the attacks would be multiples of 4 and not 3 if they're level 80. I would have to look into it. Uh, Fina here we got on White Mage Lapis. I told you guys my Fina was not like ready for this at all. So just to show you like... I clear content with fucking GIMP characters. It's a real thing. So this is my Fina, and she is nothing incredible. Uh, my Sir O, of course, is God tier, as you all know. We love Sir O. Um, important note here is I'm running the Saiga Gauntlet, both for agility and evasion, because I wanted to stack. My original plan was to have him actually evade tank some of the enemies over there. So <laughs> that's why I have like Mithril Armor, Saiga, I don't even have that impressive of a sword on him. I have the purple lightning plus zero on him. So it just goes to show you like, these characters are not maybe as crazy decked out as you might think. 
Adelard, uh, Red Mage, sub Red Mage. We do have Fyra on. I do did turn Cura off, uh, Fast Cast off, Jamming Thrust on. Um, and they're level one anyway on his cures, and I turned all those off on his sub red mage. Uh, initial AP up so that he can, uh, you know, just just be better, just do his thing. And then we also have mage's protection for magic attack resistance. Uh, you could put like savior's protection, which you know is going to increase his magic attack resistance. It might be better than putting initial AP up since he's a red mage, so his starting AP is a little bit higher. I just didn't want to risk it. Uh, yeah, all the VCs are maxed, all the espers are maxed, uh, pretty run-of-the-mill there. Uh, Shiva 4, we have, uh, probably a more unique decision here was on Ruinstern, I put Iron Giant. Um, I would probably change that. I would probably change it to Fenrir just to give the other side some survivability against Shiva's attacks. Because I really feel like Ruinstern, the reason Iron Giant was on here the first time is because I was running the Sid uh, Ruinstern composition and I wanted to have at least some resistance for Ruinstern for when he uh, inevitably got hit by Thundaga Blade or one of the other Spellblade attacks. It's the same reason he has Golden Armor plus three on. I wanted to increase that slash resistance on him and kind of make him survive in any type of capacity so that is what i was trying to do with him uh but now that rose is over here and she really supports and heals him i would probably replace it with fenrir and i would probably replace his golden armor gosh maybe with alexandrite ring i know i would have to go through and uh plan it out but yeah that's kind of what i've been running i hope you guys found that useful um thank you so much everybody uh for all the support as always if you guys do want to support me, you can go to dig.gs slash coins and make sure you swing by my Discord at dig.gs slash Discord and say hi. Uh, have a good new year, everybody. And uh, of course, you know, have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Also, I hope you like tier lists because there's more tier lists coming out tomorrow.